Natalia, I'm going to give you a little whistle-stop tour of uh, Project Charlie, our robot chessboard, which I hope you've all enjoyed looking at up in the Intel lab just now. Our project brief was to design a robotic chessboard where you can move your pieces on the board and have the opponent's pieces move themselves automatically in response to your moves. And that's pretty much exactly what we've done. Uh, the main idea we wanted to keep in our minds while we were building this thing was we want the final product to be as much like playing a normal game of chess on a normal chessboard as possible, obviously with the added robotic components. Uh, and there are four main parts to the system. First of all, there's the actual hardware that houses the board and all the components, the table itself. Uh, then we've got the uh, image recognition, which works out where all the pieces are on the board using a camera, which I'll tell you a bit more about later. And then we have uh, to move the pieces around the board, obviously, so there's hardware to do that. And then we need to be able to actually play chess and make valid chess moves. So we have a system to do that as well. First of all, there's the table, as you've seen it, sporting its rather fashionable skirt. Um, so I'll just show you a few of the main components of the table uh, and the actual hardware. First of all, on the left you can see there are the connections that link it up to the computer that runs all the control software and the chess software that tells it what it's supposed to be doing. You can just about see down there the camera which uh, observes the board and works out where all the pieces are. And there's some strip lighting in there to make a nice uh, lighting conditions for the camera and also it looks quite cool, all the glitter coming out from underneath. Um, so how does the piece detection work? First of all, we've got the camera mounted under the board which uh, takes an image and there are two main things that it has to be able to do. It has to first of all tell whether a square is empty or full and if it's full, whether the piece on it is black or white and that's enough to get rid of any ambiguity about the board state and what move's been done. So we do that by colouring the bottom of the pieces um, with red and blue to correspond to the black and white pieces. And without getting into too much of the gory details, I'll explain a little bit about how this is done. First of all, we uh, store a calibration image of what the board looks like with no pieces on it so you can see what the ceiling looks like if there are any patterns on it or weird things like that. And you can see this is the image of what the uh, camera actually sees from under the board. We then use a mask image, which you can see in the top right, which tells the software exactly which bits of the image it's supposed to be looking at and where the chess squares lie on the board. We then subtract the background image from the image that it's seeing to get rid of the ceiling and any other things that shows us exactly where the pieces are, as you can see down here, with the colors slightly shifted because of the subtraction. And then all we have to do is look at what color the pieces are and we can tell them. Um, which pieces they are. So then we have to be able to move the pieces around the board to play a game of chess. Uh, we did this using magnets, as you may have guessed. Um, there's a magnet embedded in each of the chess pieces, and then we have a magnet mounted under the board on the end of this arm, you can see here, which is split into two sections, and that's what does the actual moving. Uh, the arm has two stepper motors, uh, which move the two sections of the arm around the board. Uh, this is all controlled by a microcontroller, uh, which sends the signals to the arms, and we also have a servo motor on the end with the magnet attached to it. Uh, this is a permanent magnet on a moving motor. We didn't use an electromagnet because they're heavier and they're strong, which means uh, we can't reverse the polarity to fling the pieces up in the air when they get captured, but that's just a sacrifice we had to make. Uh, so a little more detail in how the pieces are moved around the board. We take a chess move which consists of a start and end square, a source and destination. We have to break that down into a number of straight lines for the piece to move along. That then gets translated into the angles which the arms have to be in in order to move the motors to the right places. And then that gets decomposed into a number of steps which each motor has to do, which is sent over to the stepper motors and they do their movement. In general, your chest move is going to be a straight line. Normally when you're moving a piece around the board, it's just either straight or diagonally in a straight line, which is not so difficult as uh, some of the special case moves like capturing pieces which we have to break down into other moves first to move the piece off the board then move the capturing piece into its square. Of course, the system actually has to be able to play a game of chess, so it needs to know all the rules of chess and be able to uh, validate whether the moves you've done are real chess moves or whether you're trying to cheat and be cheeky. Uh, this is the chess program we've used. It's a heavily modified version of a GPL chess program called Tiffany's. And uh, this has a built-in AI, which lets you, it provides the computer control component for you to play against, which has adjustable difficulty based on what kind of challenge you're looking for in your game. Uh, this provides the checking for whether the moves you've done are valid chess moves. And the way we've implemented it, it lets you have any combination of the three different types of playing. You can either be moving pieces on the physical board, you can be uh, playing on the GUI and having the physical board reflect the state of the game, which you don't actually interact with the physical at all. Or you can have the engine player, which moves the pieces automatically. And we can have any combination of those three types in the way we've set it up. And that's about all I have to say. Thank you for listening.